Hello everyone, it's me Lay. Welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited. I'm so stoked. I have so many goodies in here in front of me. So my family and I, we went to Oklahoma. Uh, my husband went to the dentist. And a long story short, <laughs> anyways, so I found an art supplies store. Um, we don't have a whole lot of art supplies store here where we live. And um, the closest Michael's to me is like an hour away. So every time we drive, you know, drive up to places, go to a different state or a city, I always try to find an art supply store. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a big store or anything like that. But this time I found this store in Oklahoma City. It is a heaven for creatives. I mean, it's, um, I wasn't sure what I'm going to find inside, but man, oh man, they have almost everything I would yeah, dream to have. But anyways, more than I can afford, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, but anyways, I picked up a little bit of um, collection in here and I'm super excited to share with you just in case you want to, you know, check these products out. If you've been looking for these products and you're like wondering uh, what they are and, and all that, then maybe we can do a little bit of swatches here and there. Then it'll be fun. Yeah, let's have let's just have some, blah, 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 blah. let's just have some fun. OK, so I picked up a couple of Pentel products in here i have the fine point brush tip this is really good for my type of line art the way i do my line art is i really love the thin and thick it's kind of like those comic books that you see and, and that style of line art is what i like to do so this creates that thin and thick line i'm super excited so let's open that up this one is a fine brush. I think there's like a medium one. So this is a black pigment ink. And so it's acid free. It is fade proof and water resistant. So it's light fast and so super cool. And it's permanent once dry. So that means you can use this for watercolors and it's not going to move or smudge or anything like that. Okay, so to get this one started, I know we have to remove that black. Ugh, what is wrong with me? I always, ugh. why can't I do those aesthetic unboxing? I can never, never. Of course, my brain wasn't working. It was probably melted for all the driving today. <laughs> I was twisting it in the wrong direction. Of course I was. Duh. It's okay, you can't make fun of me. I would make fun of me too. All right, so now we have that secured. So you're gonna have to squeeze it a little bit at a time and see the ink is going down, 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 like that. So, and it's gonna be in the brush. See, it's turning black now. All right. So I'm still squeezing, but I'm squeezing like gently, like gently and softly. All right. I squeezed again. Ooh, I love this fine tip. Super cool. takes a little bit of getting used to using brush like this um, but I think once you get the hang of it but then again it's a personal preference some people really like those fine tips where they can make some crisp lines fine sharp crisp lines me I tried I tried it but it seems like it's always my my drawing seems a bit weird and it doesn't feel like me. When it doesn't have a thin and thick line, but. How's the ink flow? I think it's okay, but the. 
being that it's brand new, I feel like I still have to squeeze a whole lot to get the ink flow really activated. Does that make sense? Just so you know, when I'm drying, I'm not squeezing on the pen or anything like that. <laughs> Look at my eyebrows. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> We're gonna make her really wonky. The other one is happy. This side. <laughs> All right, well, that's good enough. Lordy. All right. So that is the color brush fine point brush. That's a lot of brush word in there. So that's a color brush, fine point brush. And this one is in fine tip, and this one is in black. This one is like $5.50, I think. Okay, so this one is from Pentel also, and this is the brush sign pen, but this one is the fine tip. Now, I think this is water-based. I'm not sure. I don't have all the information for this one. But this one comes in with a very, very fine tip as well. I love using this for, like, um, lettering, brush lettering. Um, I know that this is not waterproof, though. That's one thing I know about it. So. Ooh. This is my first time drawing anything today, so my hands are kind of like all over the place. Ugh. Um, why I am drawing an eggplant, I have no idea. Don't ask me. It's really, really thin. But even though when it's, even though that it's thin, it's, my strokes are not all over the place. I'm not sure if I'm, I've just gotten used to using a brush tip since I've been practicing painting a whole lot, but it's really, it's, there's still good control with this brush tip. It's like something about it that being a brush tip and being a fine brush tip, there's still some sort of control that I have over this pen. And we'll try it with water. So I got three colors of this. I don't even know how many colors are available out there in the market. So as you can see, you can use some water and blend it like this, kind of like watercolor. So you can pull the colors and then push them and move them around. And the colors are still very vibrant, which is pretty cool. And this one is a pink one. Yep, of course I got a hot pink, you know me. I love these bright and then pastel colors. I'm really not into earthy tones, but I was just sharing on my Instagram the other day that lately I've been finding myself really, really 
loving some muted earth tone colors. I don't know. It's like ugh, changing. E. My strokes are so wonky. I haven't practiced at all today. Get in it for me. Now let's let's try and color this one and see if our lines will smudge the black lines. Nope. I'm using a marker pad. So remember if you're gonna use water medium, consider using like a mixed media paper or journal. You know, so this one is a marker pad, so it's not really meant for water, but of course you can still use use it moderately. Look how vibrant that color is. Wow, I'm impressed. Okay, so that's the pink. This is the violet. And then I got the yellow ochre. So we have yellow ochre here. Ooh, I love it. This is kind of like um, the green gold of Faber-Castell. I love that color, the green gold. Super fun. I mean, I love yellow, but I don't think I'm a big fan of yellow unless it's gold <laughs> or um, a green gold like this or a yellow ochre like this, which is funny because I love bright colors and this is more like a earthy tone. I don't know. I'm just weird like that. Weird like that. Have you ever tried this marker before? I believe that this comes in a set also. I'm gonna go find the link to Amazon. I'll post it in the description box below. Sometimes, you know, you can save a lot when purchasing a set because you can get more for your money. Uh, this one was like $3 or something, I believe, because it was available open stock. And so, but the good thing with that is that you can choose your own palette. So if you're an artist with, you know, a specific color palette that you love and you know what you like and what you don't like, then open stock is great for those things. You don't want to buy the colors that you know you're not going to use. You know, so there's like pros and cons with that one. I love it. I love it because like what I said, for some reason, I still have enough control, even though the brush tip is super fine, super thin, long and thin too, but there's a bounce that I get. The brush goes back and it just gives me enough control and I, I really love it. I'm gonna use it to color her hair. Oops. I missed. I always color outside the line. And then we'll pull those colors. It's pretty. It doesn't leave a streak or a mark from where I lay down those markers too. But see, you have to be careful with this when it's mixing because the color pink you can reactivate those pigments with water again. So it's the beauty <laughs> of watercolor. You can always reactivate it with water again. Just a little heads up. We'll color her face with this light washed color. That's the thing. So we've laid this color down a long time ago. So now it left that mark. So those are the things that I check when I am using new medium. It's like, okay, how long do I have before I can blend the colors in? Um, 
before it dries out and leaves a mark on the page and stuff like that. So it's just experimenting and really using your markers. Now I'm hurting the paper because again, it's not water. It's not a mixed media paper or watercolor paper. So it's not really meant for water. We're just bending the rules because we're just watching. So we're just having fun. But once it's fresh and you just lay down those markers, it's not going to leave a streak or anything like that. It'll just blend pretty. Oh! <laughs> we missed this. May I have a little bit of pigment? If I can add it to her ear, please. There we go. <laughs> that is good. It's all good. I'm just adding some black. Love it. All right. So these are all the pentel markers that I got today. Super exciting. I wish I purchased more colors, but you know what? It's okay. Next time. There's always a next time. All right, moving on. What do we have in here? So I got this um, Pentel Art watercolors. Um, this is 18. I thought it was gonna be a pan. Of course I wasn't reading or anything in the shop. I was just excited because it was like, oh, a candy store over there. Um, so these are watercolors. And let's see the description. What does it say? It says, it blends easily to create subtle hues, dries evenly, it resists fading, it will not crack or flake, really? So, hmm, how light fast is this, all right? So ideal for glazing without turning muddy, okay. Plastic tubes allow every last drop of paint to be used, all right. Great to use in conjunction with oil pastel, which I just purchase some set of oil pastel as well okay um once colors dry on palette they can be reused when water is applied of course we know that because you can always reactivate it so great to use in conjunction with oil pastel speaking of oil pastels i did a michael's haul also and i purchased some <laughs> paints of course Come on. And I purchased this set of oil pastel, the Faber Castell, because oil pastel, Faber Castell. <laughs> oil pastel, Faber from Faber Castell. I've never really played with um, oil pastel, but we'll do a swatching and sample drawings with this one on the next video because this is going to be really long. And I don't want it to be really long. But okay, let's open this one up with you guys. We might have to cut this video in two. <laughs> for me to do the gouache because that's gonna take a while so I guess we'll open this one up and then we'll do the gouache in a part two video because you know I talk so much and it, it, it takes us forever and ever and ever okay let me know if you are a fan of watercolor tubes I am I am a, I'm undecided. <laughs> I love it and I don't love it, you know. I haven't really gotten a chance to create my own palette yet. So I, I bought, I bought some um, Winsor and Newton before in the past and I still have it in the tube and I haven't done my, you know, um, custom palette or anything like that. But I picked up three colors today from Winsor Newton. We'll do that in the second part of our video. Um, but, you know, I've seen many different artists creating their own palette with, you know, empty tins, empty pans, watercolor pans, and their own tins and all that. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to do that also, build my collection, and then also build my own palette of the colors that I seem to gravitate towards to, the ones that I always reach out the most. Um, 
but I'm still exploring and I'm really in the middle of still learning my style and trying to build that aesthetic here yeah, for a lack of better word trying to build my own aesthetic and look and so I'm still learning I'm still in the process so once I'm decided of those favorite colors of mine that I always end up using then I might probably create my own palette and of course I'll share that with all of you all right so this is 18 colors that's a lot we have white we have Naples yellow we have yellow we'll probably get it out like that it will never be like this again <laughs> it'll never look like this again so we have naples yellow we have yellow we have lemon yellow we have yellow green we have deep green we have viridian i'm probably pronouncing some of these wrong we have sky blue we have cobalt blue we have prussian blue oops we have ultramarine, we have a purple color, we have red, we have, ooh, how do you pronounce this, vermilion, like it's kind of like an orange, red orange. We have brown, we have Van Dyke brown, Van Dyke, it's kind of like an actor, <laughs> action star van dyke we have yellow ochre oh love it so is it kind of like you think they're gonna go close in color in hues and in tone then we have black all right ah, this is gonna be fun you know why i am kind of half and half if i like the watercolor tubes i'm going to say because uh, i have heavy heavy hands so i over i end up over squeezing every time every time i try not to but Ugh. it's a little bit hard to squeeze which is good for me because like when i said i have heavy hands because i always end up look at that i just end up with so much that's still a whole lot this is the lemon yellow we'll do the yellow just little lay Seuss. that's a lot my goodness i don't know i can never be light this is a naples yellow oh my gosh <sighs> I use a lot. Oh, that's actually good for skin tone. You build up your skin tone. It's a good base. And then you have this brown. Oh, their brown is... I don't like this brown. It's more like um, sienna red. It's really warm. This is the Yankee... Oh, no, no. This is the Van Dyke brown. Why did I say Yankee? Where did I get the Yankee? Oh, gosh. Maybe my friend Yankee is thinking of me. Okay. And then this is the yellow ochre. So we'll do the warms first. We'll start with all these. We'll do some swatches. We'll see what they look like. So fade resistant, huh? Light fast. There's no ratings or anything like that, how light fast this is, but let's see. We can probably put it under the sunlight. This is page. Ooh. It is a very creamy consistency. It's like, um, <laughs> I have no comparison. I'm so bad at this. Um, if you like makeup um, and you've tried the tube concealer from MAC, <laughs> it's kind of like that. It's very, very thick. Um, it has a thick consistency, but look how vibrant this color is. A little bit goes a very, very, very long way. And that's why I always say I always over squeeze my watercolors because a little bit of these um, pigments goes a very long way. So I'm just going to get a little bit in there. But when I'm doing swatches, I really like to be generous with the amount of paint I'm also um, using because you really want to see the vibrancy of the colors and of the pigments and all that so you want to be generous with the amount of paint this one feels like it blended much easier i don't know if i picked up more water than my first time but it seemed like yeah okay yeah maybe i didn't just use enough water on the, that first one because this one is blending easily also i mean i say spreading really nicely the colors is, uh, this one is the Naples yellow. It's a really pretty base for a skin tone. I really love that color. It has this warmth. Um, and of course, if you add white, if you're a much, you know, pale skin, then you can just add white and make it lighter. But you can definitely build the color. So this is their brown color. This is more like a burnt sienna to me, this brown color here. It's really warm. 
Yeah, kind of like an Indian red also. Like a burnt sienna. I don't know. It's very pretty. But I feel like it's not brown. Or I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's not, it's just me, it's not you. Hmm. Nice. I actually like doing that when I'm swatching. Kind of like take a piece of um, the pigment and move it around, but it's a beauty of watercolor. So you want to see those effect also. Let's do the yellow ochre. So this is pretty. I love yellow ochre. I don't know why. Like what I said, I'm not into the earth tones, but I just love this color. The green gold of Faber Castell is more mustard, more in the green tone. This has really warmth to it, this one. So I'm gonna try and take out a little bit of pigments and see how the colors are moving, you know, with water. Let's add a little bit of water here. Let's see how the pigments are gonna move because that's the beauty of watercolor. You wanna see those effect. Okay, now let's see the, what is this? This is the Van Dyke, the Van Dyke Brown. Ah, I got them too close to one another. Huh. This color is more translucent, transparent than the others. The other seems more opaque. Maybe I'm not adding enough. Goodness. Let's see. But it's like a pretty hot cocoa color. It's a perfect chocolate color. Milk chocolate. Ooh. Let's see. It's, it's pretty all right. Okay, I want to add a little bit of that yellow. See maybe if I didn't. Okay. Rewetting and activating is a breeze. Didn't give me a hard time. Just add a little bit in here. This is like very bright yellow. It's like, wah! Pretty though. Right, let's see. Can you guys see? See the effect when I added a little bit more water and pulled all those pigments? Even though they're very saturated, it's still translucent because it is watercolors. And that's what we are looking for, watercolors. It has to be transparent, you know. All right, so this is the Vermilion. <gasps> Squeeze a little. This one's a little runny than the others, okay? This one is the red. Wow, I'm getting better squeezing. Look at me. Right? Okay, okay. This one is sky blue. Oh, oh, that's a lot. Goodness. Okay, this one is cobalt blue. Ugh. All right, guys, I take it back. <laughs> I'm not getting any better. Lace, squeeze a little. There. Perfect. Okay, this one is pretty. Prussian blue. Prussian? Prussian? How do I say that? Pers Prussian? Man. English, second language only. <laughs> this one is purple. Okay, ooh, this is a pretty shade of purple too. I love it. All right, let's start with that first. Okay, this is the Vermilion. Mmm, nice, easy to activate those colors. Okay. I'm gonna wash my brush and pull some colors from the side so we can see what it looks like when it dries. All right. This one is the red. Some, it's beautiful red. This is a really pretty red. Some reds are pink, you know? Um, some reds are like maroon, but this is like my favorite shade of lipstick. It's the Ruby Woo from MAC again. And this has that perfect shade of red. I love this red. I didn't realize I like red. Ah! I'm the worst. Beautiful. That is beautiful. Okay. Repeating the same process and just pulling and pushing the pigments around. So we can see that watercolor effect. Okay. Now this is the sky blue. Let's see. Ah, it's so creamy, and it's just so pretty. Ah, uh, this is so pretty. It's just so bright and happy. I love it. And you know that you can always just add, like, um, 
white if you want it to be a little darker. Um, you can add, you know, play around with the tones. Um, and so this is your primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. So you can play around with that and create other tones from there. Now this is, okay, I think this one is the cobalt blue. I should do this because I'm going to put name in there. So this is the cobalt blue. This is like a, this is pretty too. Gorgeous color. Oh, we didn't pull those pigments from the sky blue. We should do that. I feel like I'm not getting enough pigment here because I was scared to go close to the sky blue. It's beautiful. Okay, so this one would be, has to be the ultramarine. No, 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 no. That one is the ultramarine. This will be the cobalt blue. No, I don't know. Well, we're gonna have to. I don't know which one this is. I think this is the ultramarine. Beautiful. This is like the royal blue. Pretty. Let's pull a little bit of these colors. See what I'm saying about reactivating it? How easy that is You just add water and just kind of like, if you want to wash look, let's repeat the same process over here in the sky blue. You can just see those effects. And then repeat it, do it here. But we want to make sure which one is which. I don't remember. Okay, so that's the ultramarine. This one is the ultramarine. That is the cobalt blue. There we go. That is the red. Now this one is the Prussian blue. Okay. Oh, wow. No. This is beautiful. That's pretty color. Ooh. Oh, that's beautiful. Love this. Now, I feel like this is more jeans. This one is, um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, this is more like a jean color. Blue jean, blue jean color. It's gorgeous. It's actually really beautiful. I don't know if you guys can see like that. So I'm just gonna move it down. Can you guys see that? It's beautiful. It's pretty. Okay, now we'll have the purple. Okay. This is a very cool, not cool in the sense of you're so cool, but has a very cool tone, but of course it's purple, but some purple has like, um, like more warmth, um, but then it's gonna be like red violet or things like that, but that's, that's a gorgeous, gorgeous purple color. Okay, so we have yellow green here. Okay, we have Viridian. Oh Lord, that's a lot. Hi, oops. I did it again. This one is deep green. Okay, I'm gonna be careful. Looking at the paint from here, it doesn't look like there's a difference, but I feel like this has more yellow tone to that. So, okay, we'll start with the yellow green. Oop, I gotta go wash my brush. It's getting a little muddy. Okay. Ooh, so bright. So bright and so happy. This yellow green color, it's like a this perfect springy color, like fresh grass. It's beautiful. Okay. Uh, this is the Viridian. So it's like a deep cobalt turquoise color. Viridian green. If that's how you pronounce it. Ooh, gorgeous. That's beautiful. Let me pull some of those pigments and move them around. Okay. Now last, we have the deep green. It seems so similar. Yeah, but this one has more blue tone and this one is more really has a yellow tone. So more warmth in this deep green. Pretty, super pretty actually. All right. I mean, and how perfect is my swatches? I have white and black left. 
Come on. It's like I planned. <laughs> I didn't plan it. <laughs> Sometimes things work out for me. Not all the time, though. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do the black <clears throat> and then the white last. Small lace, small, small, small. Perfect. Okay, let's do the white. Ooh, creamy. Super creamy, like milk. But then my brush is dirty. So it has this tint of green from that last color that we did. Yeah. When you use white, make sure you use a very clean brush. Yikes. Or a different brush for your white. Okay, last but not the least, ladies and gentlemen, this will be our black color. Let's see that. Ah, I love it. So nice and rich very opaque black nice super nice i love it i'm gonna pull some of the pigments and kind of like see what it look like yeah huh. beautiful 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 all right so this was the part one uh, i don't want it to be too long and also it's getting a little too late and i have some things i really want to talk to you guys about the about the whole buying gouache acrylic acrylic gouache excuse me and um it's gonna be my first time this is my first acrylic gouache i'm super excited but um yeah i'll do the swatches with you guys in my next video so um please don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss that video and also if you are not subscribed yet i do hope that you consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up it really helps out the channel um my name is lay ralston you can find me on social media as mommy lay i hope that this was relaxing and inspiring for you until next video, stay creative and stay happy. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.